join back in with our players as they have been exploring the marketplace of the Crucible deep in Cadfessi. They have sold their items and had a peruse of what the market has to offer. They'll not purchase anything just yet, choosing to save their money and maybe build before maybe making a few purchases. They are now beginning to make their way up the mountainside and further into the city of Cadfessi itself. You move out of the market and you start to leave the smells and sounds of uh, the, the actual bustle and hustle of the marketplace. As you do, you see some more of those uh, offer for Dante for the first time, but for the others, uh, you see some more of those uh, hoverboard skateboarding teenagers uh, for, for zooming past and uh, almost knocking down a gnome that's scrambling to hold on to a bunch of different cogs and things as they out the way and they like they giggle as they just pass and then he goes on with his way. Um, are you moving in any particular way? Are you doing anything? I know that you guys are heading towards the bastion to talk to the admin building about what for like the competitions and stuff that are going on and how to enter and such. Um, but uh, is are you just casually moving? Are you keeping an eye out? Like what's, uh, what's the mood? I think, well, I think that um, Eleni would be maybe suddenly I'm trying to think how I want to say this. Well, I think she's been swept up so far with the mm. excitement and that she can see that Volu's really excited about this stuff and there's people happy and there's people joking. And she's now had a little bit of time to think as we're walking about this, the stuff that Ichi and Dante have come across and this sort of criminal underworld and it's bringing back some memories. Mm. So I think on the way there, she's going to start to feel a little bit paranoid and she's going to start really watching everyone and anything that might be out of place. If somebody isn't looking happy and playing and laughing, she's going to be clocking them. Like, who are they? What are they looking at? Are, are we being watched? Um, so, yeah, she's probably going to be a little bit in her own head okay. as, we, as we're as we walking up to the bastion. Give me a perception as well as, you're, as you begin to make your way up. Uh, for Volu, I know when we ended last time, the, the marketplace had been a little bit crowded and bustled. And as you begin to leave that, um, there's almost like a that empty space in between the wards that are just paths uh, as you sort of come out into the open air. That was yeah, 20 so billion. Oh, okay. sorry, sorry, you go first. No, no, that's fine. So, as everything has been so fast and quick, and then I was talking with the, um, the oh, what's the name of them? Cloth Merchant? Um, Taylor? Taylor. Yeah. 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 Cloth Merchant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just talked about a pseudonym for the first time, and that's kind of playing on my mind, and it's triggered memories of it. And then I'll, so I'll kind of be rubbing the clover that's on my cloak and kind of just being a little bit in myself as we kind of saunter up to uh, to the bastion okay you would uh before i just come to dante you notice for each they are keeping on the lookout uh just similar to how you have been moving through dante you know obviously uh you've met up with these two now but you also know that potentially the showing up of somebody else or, or others um but what is dante doing Dante will predominantly just keep his eyes ahead, be fa fixated on, say, what is happening next, um, and will just be kind of moving forward. Not that, unfortunately, there's not much more he would do. Okay, so You begin to move, leaving the sounds behind you, and as you make your way up the hill, you, the sounds of the chattering and calling of the marketplace are replaced by the rhythmic banging of hammers and the soft murmuring of people at work. The air begins to grow thicker and more of an acrid tang of burning coal fills the air as you begin to pass forges. And at first, small local places, but as you move deeper, bigger, Larger buildings that seem ut utilitarianly uh, built, 
as you get deeper in and space becomes tighter, it more becomes large forges that seem to serve streets or blocks of areas. Um, and you see many people either left and right using different, uh, making different things. Uh, a sweat drenched or a dwarf emerges, breathing and, and giving themselves some air before they move back in underneath. Um, as you're making your way up, a Lenny with the, the uh, I'd say that Dante, you would notice at the point that they call out, but you wouldn't notice before. Um, and and Volu, uh, I'll let you decide on whether what, at which point you you sort of bring your attention to focus. But with Eleni, with the you looking around, while this area isn't as much like in the marketplace, everyone's sort of vying for attention. That isn't the same here, but it's no less crowded. If that makes sense, there's still people moving by. There's still people that sort of like move too close to you, and you're not feeling very comfortable. And you move out into a slightly uh, more open area around a well. And you notice very quickly, there's uh, almost like a cheer that makes you look. And you see a small group of children huddled around an, an elderly human woman that seems to be throwing and tossing uh, some colourful pebbles and polished stones. And as you sort of look over, uh, she meets your eyes and is, uh, uh, fortune stones? Anybody wish their fortune? Just two copper. She's a hag. Kill her. <laughs> <laughs> do I do I get any sense, me or my swarm, about this woman? Do I think she's actually got any kind of magical power, or am I just going to think this is a bit of a children's? I mean, you give me an insight. I will keep my passive of nine. <laughs> Volu, do you think that would snap you out? It was more directed at a Lenny. Oh. <laughs> uh, Dante, you would have picked it up purely just because you're. It's just naturally that you somebody called in your direction. Um, a... mm, go on, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> um, it would because I've been thinking a lot about the past. When I hear the like, hear about your future, it's like, oh, okay, something to take my mind off it. Hmm. Out of double uh, that one. <laughs> the double the double nat one does uh oh not do you so well um yeah i mean she i you i think you're definitely i think your paranoia it will more normally you know it's more oh you can't tell your paranoia if you can't tell that means they're lying um so it's not you you can't tell for a brief moment and then that uncomfortability uh, uncomfortableness oh. of like Mm, I can't read this person. No, don't trust them. Um, but they, they, the, the kids seem fine. There's a, you know, they just sort of like she tells really good fortunes. Is it that I don't trust her? Is it just that I think she's play acting? You so when you say you I think that she's you lying, can't tell. Or you can't, can't tell. tell. This is it. So it, your dislike of her is more the fact you cannot read her. Okay. It, it's you look at her and it's like she could be genuine, she could be legit. You can't tell, and it, okay. that makes you feel uncomfortable. She hasn't said a price, has she? Two copper is what she said. Oh, two copper. Her. Sorry. I mean, I've got two copper. Okay. Yeah, I am going to very hesitantly give her two copper, but it's almost at a reach. Mm. It's like I I only get as close as I need to get to drop the money into her hand she she takes the money she does motion uh for, there is like a soft cushioned stool um for you to sit at if you wish but she doesn't dwell on it she just sort of motions to oh, it and then good. you see she scoops up the stones and she begins to rattle them and she listens for a moment before casting them down as she does that dante pierces his sword into her <laughs> No, definitely doesn't. <laughs> I'm gonna start taking it to tell, like He'll stuff. Do it. Stuff you say will be stuff. The thing what makes you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. gonna tell, I'm gonna make it your That's own. Do it. This actually is his own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> legitimately. Um, <laughs> as is life, as in game. <laughs> so they. Begin to just sort of reading and outside outsiders. 
be careful who you trust. And at first you're sort of reading this like obvious you like you look at you guys, obviously you're outsiders. Yeah. It's like um even even bonds forged on the road can turn sour. And then as she's sort of looking over, she sort of flicks to you, Eleni. And quieter that if you hadn't rolled so well early, you might miss it. As she the beast that sustains you may not endure its like your dying breath or the dying breath of Astera. Even a symbiotic dance turns deadly when the music stops. To me or to Dante? To you, Eleni. The beast that sustains me. May not survive me. May not sustain, may not endure the dying breath of Astera. Even okay. a symbiotic dance can turn deadly when the music stops. Okay. I'm not going to say anything. I'm and, watching her very closely, but I'm not. And she just speaking. comes back and with any do I, do, and, do and I immediately gauge, like do I gauge. Um, do I gauge anything from Eleni. Give me what's what's your passive insight because you are distracted today, so I'm not going to let you roll. Uh, Twelve. I'm going to say so. I think you would be able to pick up that something was said, but they uh, Eleni doesn't seem off or anything, or doesn't react in a in a major way. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. Chris is interested in this. I'm not sure what Dante is, so I just kind of want to. <coughs> But I kind of, I think Dante's going to offer up a couple of copper. As you offer up the copper, can you give me a charisma save, please? <laughs> Ooh -hoo. Uh -oh. 13. Okay. As you, you reach out and you put the copper in her hand, and as she takes them, she sort of, ow! And she drops them and they to the, to the table. And there is burn, welt marks in her hands. And she's like, they're, they're, they're hot. And she, she I, I, I need to get these seen to. And she sort of scoops up her uh, coins and, and sort of begins mo moving back towards the her house that's behind. Um, and you can see she's like running cold water onto them. Um, Dante, if you look at the coins, they don't look hot in any way. They're not like glowing. I, I, I want to follow her in, Liam. Yeah, she just goes just within the like, uh, like over the shelter where there's like a bucket of water, and you can see she's just sort of uh, keeping it cool. Okay, I mean, I've. Is there anything I can do medicine-wise to help her? You could help her wrap it and clean it, but it's it, you know it may make sure it doesn't uh, get any worse. You know what? I'm going to give her a potion of healing. Okay. But I, but as I'm as I'm getting the potion out and holding it out to her, I want to say, let me see, and I want to actually look at her. Yeah, hand uh, she'll, she'll she'll show you. Um, it's not like uh, like as you look at it, it's not like the whole coin has imprinted in. She definitely let go quick enough. Yeah. But the almost like there's two definitive lines where the edges of the coin hit. Um, that are almost at the point of blistering, you know, where it's just mm. just bringing up to blister. Um, you actually think I'd say because uh, it's it's relative, isn't it? Damage. So I'd say that with uh, with a with generally what you know of medicine, it's not significant damage. You do think that it if it was wrapped and and kept clean and cool for now, you know, cooling the skin. At the moment, and yeah, yeah, but I'm just, I don't know if, I don't know if Dante did something then, and if he hurt this woman, or if, because I mean, he no, wasn't, I mean, well, you were holding the coins, weren't you? And the coins yeah, weren't and, burning but, you, and the percep and your perception, he didn't do anything, he didn't cast anything, 
there was no uh, move of steam or or heat off Dante himself. There's no flare up like you've seen when he fights. Okay. I mean, depending on what your passive is for perception or insight. Well, I mean, perception's a seventeen, and insight's a fourteen. Then I would say that you probably got maybe you glanced over and you probably could see that he was confused. Okay. Ichi, in, in, in which to, case, to, I, I, I've got a, I've got a plus four in what? medicine, so I'm thinking. I could at least help her wrap something up or, or have a look. Mm -hmm. And then I want to go look at the coins and see if they're still hot. I've, I've picked them back up. Okay. I'm looking at them. Like, kind of. Each you would probably put a hand on uh, Dante's shoulder and probably just quietly say, uh, maybe we should move on soon. <clears throat> okay. I would just very quietly murmur to her, um, I'm sorry. And then I would turn and walk away. <clears throat> Dante's just like looking at these coins. What what happened then? I do not know. These coins, are they hot to you? And just opens up his hand. You won't drop them in your hand this time. If, if I pick one up? If you go to touch it, it is hot to the touch. Not enough that it will, again, like you touching it like that in a yeah, controlled way. To... It, it doesn't, it's sort of red, but it doesn't yeah. burn, burn you. Um, but yeah, you imagine if you caught these. Yeah. So I'm just going to be like, ow. Yes, they're hot. Mm. What, what have you done to them? I have done nothing. Mm. Don't it? We'll just swiftly turn around and start walking. He, he, he will follow. Um, he will, I think. It's kind of annoying he's not here. <laughs> yeah, it is. A, but... <laughs> um, so, yeah, don't we speak with each year? It's just like. I am eating things. On purpose? No. Look. He would uh, move his hand close enough to feel the heat radiating. And they are dying down now. It, it, it's not like you're permanently still heating it. Um, and you can't tell. You couldn't feel it. Nothing. I do not feel it now. Careful who you hand metal items to then. Mm. Um, you have gloves, maybe. Uh, I don't know if you wear gloves now. Uh, that's a Can personal make? choice. Um, maybe it is skin contact. I, I do not know how it works, but... We should maybe try some things. Hmm. Um, but you do continue forwards. Volu and uh, Eleni sort of trailing a little bit behind us. You can sort of see them talking to each other. Um, that was very strange. When when this all happened, did I feel anything? Like no, there was no kind of like warmth from me. There was, as in like no kind of. No, you didn't feel saw... any difference at anything. Okay. I would sort of, as I'm walking with Volu, yeah. I would just be like, that was very strange. The coins were hot. Even even after they were they still burning or they they would have burned me if I'd have picked them up, but they didn't seem to be burning Dante at all. Was he glowing like he was before? No.
There's something very strange about him. You sat with Ichi when we were in the tower. Did he say anything? No. And I... I feel that he probably wouldn't give away a confidence. But that is a strange relationship. I don't think that they're travelling together out of friendship alone. I can't see Ichi having any friends, to be honest. But... <laughs> Don't take the other friend out of a hand. Chatty is a lovely guy. <laughs> <laughs> so so personable. How, how are you? Because your reading was interesting. Um, can I ask Liam? Have I told Volu about my swarm? Would I have well, done I've, that? I've, That's I've, up to you. Uh, you I've, you I've have seen, been together. I've seen it. He's seen well, me. He's you've seen, seen but, come out. Uh, but whether she's told you, in terms of that, could be a magic that she uses. You know what I mean? Like you mm. can make your magic look however you look. You've seen wizards that cast spells that look like owls and birds. Um, so that it's it purely up to you. Obviously, you've been traveling together three, four, five months ish, something like that. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's up to you whether you've explained in full right. or. Uh, so I'm going to say, so far, I haven't really said anything. But now, I would say... She said that a beast sustains me. I, I'm not aware of a beast as such. However, I do have a connection, like you do, to, to the Fae. It's what helps me with my magic. You've probably seen the moths when I cast spells. Oh. I did not. Oh. See, th I thought that was just part of who you were. Are you saying... Uh, I'd say, as, as, as you're saying you? this, uh, one or two of the moths will just sort of flutter out of just uh, almost from under her armour. Mm-hmm. Before, like, moving around in the wind and then flowing back in through another crack. Can I um, look at look at them and see if one will land on my hand if I hold it out? Give me a persuasion. It's just a straight thirteen. Okay, it as you move your hand up, it swoops in and close and around your hand, but away again. It won't land. Okay. But you feel the like beating of air, like there is definitely a creature rather than it being a spectral uh, entity. Mm. Something happened to me in the past. I I didn't always have magic like this, and. The the swarm, I call it. it. It helped me. It helped me heal. Um, and it's linked very strongly to Astera. I'm worried Maybe. that she talked about Astera dying. This is... This might be why we had that connection. Because... I didn't want Astera to wither anymore. I can't let I can't let it take away everything. And this is why I know you don't trust Ichi, but he also has a really strong connection to Astera. There's something else going on with Dante. When she says Ichi, I kind of have a bit of snort of derision, but <laughs> I, I do actually take in what she says. It's almost like mm. a, the, 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 the childish, like, no. Yeah. yeah. But I am actually listening and, and taking it in. Um, And then I kind of just glance over at Dante and see if the, I can notice anything about him. As uh, as you look at him over, he seems the same Dante that you've been seeing in the labyrinth. 
of streets that make up the uh, innermost areas of the Forge Ward open up into a more bustling square that's currently dominated by a grand tavern. You see the sign above it, na uh, naming it the Miner's Hearth. Miner's Hearth, sorry. I don't know, Hearth. Uh, the Miner's <laughs> Hearth. Um, it's uh, the weathered sign depicts a dwarf, uh, dwarven figures like silhouettes raising mugs in a toast. Um, the, uh, there is an aroma of meats and ales and the rhythmic clanging of hammers from the nearby workshops sort of drown out under the laughing. Um, as you're sort of moving across this area, you're, if you imagine you're, you're almost moving uh, straight across the square, and this is on the eastmost side, it's sort of like a three-story uh, tavern inn. Um, two dwarves are currently sat on the stairs. One of them uh, seems uh, quite tall for a dwarf, very broad and a belly that definitely shows his fondness for the ale. Um, thick, fiery red streak uh, beard uh, braided into knots. And you can see he's sort of like arm in arm with another dwarf that's much smaller, more stocky and a brown beard. Uh, looks to be much younger than the other, and they're currently telling another group of uh, just other anyone who'll listen. Uh, different, you can say, oh, have you heard the tale of of the whispering caves deep beneath the mountains? They say the tunnels twist and turn, haunted by the echoes of forgotten miners, the whispers of ancient secrets. And you can sort of hear them sort of telling these tales and uh, twisting twisting the stories. Um, you can stay, stick around to listen or move on through. Uh, it is purely up to you. Um, I mean, Ichi and Dante were up in front. Have they stopped or are they just going straight on? And I know I Dante's not here to answer that. Yeah. Because I think we, we would probably be, we're behind them, aren't we? I should yeah. probably repeat all that as well, don't, shouldn't I? Uh, I, I? I couldn't hear everything. I'm kind of like, just, just trying to. Um, so yeah, Dante, as as you and uh, each enter this uh, courtyard and can hear these uh, the two dwarves sort of spinning their tales to anyone who will listen nearby, um, very clearly uh, inebriated in the <laughs> mid afternoon drinks, um, and you can hear them currently talking about the whispering caves deep beneath them at the Mornell peaks. Uh, they say the tunnels twist and turn. Um, would you stop or would you just continue? Because if you guys continue, it obviously, like, basically, if you imagine you're walking along one side of the courtyard and they're on the far east side, but you can hear them at this distance. Unless there's a reason to stop, Dante's not going to stop. Anyone can, well, he's not exactly somebody who's going to ignore anyone to say, hey, do you want to way over here kind of thing? But he's very single mind, like, sing it wasn't tunnel single vision. Minded. Tun tunnel vision. Yeah, and I think um, Eleni, unless unless Volu wanted to stop, Eleni's interested enough to look them over and probably go drunk, drunk, harmless. People seem to be enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Do you know what I mean? I think she, she'd weigh them up for. Yeah. It, does this look like anything's going to happen? And if they're all <laughs> looking like they're enjoying themselves, she probably wouldn't stop unless Volu wanted to to stop and listen. Um. Everyone would kind of walk, carry on walking. Um, I'd kind of slow down in my walk and just listen a little bit longer and almost come to a stop to listen to the story and then realise that they've carried on. Okay. And kind of... um, yeah, so I'd say that you sort of... Uh, it seems like the two that are arm in arm are sort of like jumping in on bits of the story as the other one comes in with a... As some say there are colossal gemstones the heart of Kaf uh, down in the heart of Cadfessi. Pulsing with strange magics that can change the fabric of reality. It was like, oh, wives' tales. I said, no, no, I was told by a lone fire sprite, my friend, befriended a dwarven miner centuries ago, gifted him my, a, a magical pickaxe that still now today people search for. He delved deeper than any miner before and disturbed a fire elemental. The city was engulfed in flames and the pickaxe was lost forever, unfortunately. Um, as then, Volu, you sort of snap back to... Uh, I'd say that Eleni probably stopped at the end of the street, sort of, you would have definitely noticed. If she noticed that Volu wasn't with her, she'd stop and turn around. Um, yeah. 
But for, uh, I, I imagine Ichi and Dante sort of got a bit further up the hill. Dante, uh, Dante Ichi would have sort of tapped on the shoulder. Actually, I don't think your per- perceptions are high enough to notice, to be honest. I think you two are sort of just meandering <laughs> slowly still further into the the ward. Um, but Vola, you, you, so your attention was sort of snapped back. Yeah, and then I kind of see Eleni looking and almost go like, oh, oh dear, and then just kind of scurry and Mm -hmm. catch up and go, sorry, sorry. (laughs) It's fine. Were they saying anything interesting? There was talks of a magical pickaxe and a big gem uh, down in the mines. Okay. Seems like they've got a lot of tales to tell. I I think they've been enjoying themselves probably all morning. Sounds like a good way to enjoy a morning. <laughs> yes, maybe later. <laughs> maybe we can have a drink later. Let's you catch would. up. And you would be able to catch up at this point. You would. Uh, so I imagine Dante and Ichi would have stopped at uh, a point where the road seems to uh, split. You can see that the main road continues. Uh, I'm trying to think of the orientation of the city. I think it would be southwestward. I think, but basically, oh, uh... Uh, the main road can continues through to the Mythic Ward. And that's where you guys made your way down here the first time with the carts, where you made your way through the open gardens and the and the spacious uh, la- large buildings that you thought were the libraries and such. Um, but you also see quite a number of uh, the locals seem to be heading up uh, towards the left. And as you peer up that way, you can see a uh, a large set of almost shiny black steps that are carved into the side of the sheer cliff face that separates the the wards for most of uh, in some of the cases um you know that one leads you straight to the chantry so you, we... so you guys have been we're down in the crucible so the crucible is on the flat is that's on the plains <sighs> that's where we met with the old lady and no, no, no so that's where yeah that's where the market was yeah Bye. you went up into the forge ward which is these sloped areas where all the miners were and stuff and where the upper shelf a bit you know the second shelf in the forge ward Mm -hmm. so that's where the miners hearth is the first shelf is where you came across the miners half um (laughs) i heard to say it and i would just have oh yeah i'm gonna keep saying it probably the first shelf area maybe it should just be canon it's just her they couldn't spell and it's just h-e-r the (laughs) the first the first shelf of the of the forge ward is where you encountered the lady with the stones um, and you can either go forwards along the main road, which takes the gentle slope up into the Mythic Ward, or you can take the steps that you haven't seen or taken before, but a lot of the people who are just on foot generally seem to be taking that way. Um, it seems to be mostly like wagons and carts and stuff that are going on up. As you uh, do sort of move to this bit where there's a separation, you actually notice a it's they're not uh they're almost like uh floating platforms and again you're seeing this uh the the zikar gemstone that you've seen on the bottom of carts and stuff but it's almost if you imagine just a 10 foot by 10 foot steel plate with a Zikar crystal in the center and on the edges. And it's currently stacked high with boxes and cargo that's tied down with rope. And they're being just pulled, like by one one hand on it with a by a person, uh, you know, that's just pulling it by hand, moving this large floating crate, sort of maneuvering it. You can see that there's almost like a caravan of them. Uh, This seems to be all the same. And you see at points they like lock together and move as one. And then at points where the streets become narrower, they disconnect from each other in there. Um, And as you've been moving, as you get further up, you start to see more of the the Aether stream vehicles that you have uh, heard about. Um. But yes, would you like to uh, take the steps which will take you to your destination faster or head through the Mythic Ward and, and take the scenic uh, route uh, to see more of the city? 
I mean, we came through the mythic. We'd have come through the mythic ward on the way down, wouldn't we? In the first place, we would you we have come you, down you that have, way? You, yeah, yeah, because you, you all both had carts. Mm -hmm. What time of the, probably, what you, time of day is it? We are probably about two p.m. ish. I think I'd be tempted to go for the steps, but it's yeah. I'd look at them and kind of go. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You've only got little legs. Um, and then, to you then. No, I'd say well, I think we'll take them. I mean, I'm seven so, foot, right? It's just like <laughs> one step. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dante, are you, are you happy to go the most direct route? Yeah. Okay, so you move off the main road and begin sort of moving through. They're still quite, they're, they're not side roads, they're still quite wide, but they are definitely not like this large main route that you have currently been following that is like wagon sized. Um, and as the streets get narrower, it gets a bit denser as people are moving backwards and forwards. Um, and eventually you come to the actual side, like almost cliffside. And looking up, you can see that there is a, a, like almost meticulously carved, smooth obsidian-like stone, black stonework all the way up just on the staircase itself. Um, a, a decorative but purposeful banister uh, edges the outer side of the staircase. Um, and you can see it sort of moves upwards, winding, and it seems to have been cut into the uh, cliffside to make the other way up, if that makes sense. Um, but as you sort of get to the bottom of it, you can look straight up the centre, and it's almost being held up. It almost looks like it's hovering with itself in certain positions. If you look right, you can't see that the cliff is sort of holding it at points. Um, you can begin to ascend. You see people, kids, children, everyone sort of making the way up and down. Those that are local move quite quickly up them and uh, not, not taking um, as much time. Uh, but as you begin to ascend, the air begins to grow noticeably cooler. The gentle breeze carrying the scent of wildflowers uh, whips through. through. And as uh, for Volu, um, as the, you sort of like... Uh, maybe about the seventh turn up, and you're like, you know, like you're like, okay, okay. and to be fair, Volu, as you're sort of taking these steps, I've had a lot of food today. It's not; they're not too big for you to take as such. They are almost like thin obsidian steps that, like, there's just many of them, if that makes sense. Um, as you would know, obviously, uh, there is quite a nearly every city is sort of like this. Like, there aren't many cities where one race was the most prevalent. Um, so a lot of architecture, doors are built high often. Uh, steps are long but shallow to allow for the, the shorter leg uh, of the races to, to move upon them with ease. Um, and you have noticed as you've moved through Cad Fessy, everything was made by magic. It's not like you don't see, there's not like, oh, this brick and that building, it's like the street merges with the building you can tell that it's like they just grew that building upwards. Um, uh, and you begin to move up. Uh, and you get to this section, and Volu, you look out, and your eyes are sort of brought out into uh, looking out towards the west further into the uh, Zanagath Desert. Um, you see all the grey and dark slate now almost turning a reddy brown as the sun reflects off them. And you feel a peaceful moment, almost like meditative. Mm. Um, Eleni, uh, Eleni, as you move up and, and move up behind, you can see that all upon the rails, the soft, faint glows of uh, magical sigils. And as you are making your way up and looking around, there are fully sections of this staircase that are almost carved away from the rock entirely. Um, about halfway up, there is a small landing adorned with a we weathered bench. Um, you can see there is a uh, priest currently sat on the bench. 
eating a, a sandwich of some sort, sort of looking out uh, peacefully out into the desert. Uh, as they see you come up, they uh, they they sort of nod, and say, uh, "Astera guide you." And, and you, uh, so those of you that are from and have been around a lot, this is a priest of the Andernight. Um Is there a standard response to that, Liam? Uh, and to sort of like, anti, like anti, anti, yeah, anti, anti you too. Uh, it's there. It's a similar similar yeah. thing. Um, I would say Dante. You probably and you would know of like you've picked it up from moving around, but you're from Giskia that don't really, and you're way before the Under Knights really got there. Um, so you'll have picked it up from your travels, Volu. You won't really know. You'll have heard, you've probably heard since being back here and from Eleni, mm. um, but this is probably your first interaction with a direct priest of um, mm. of, of the Andernite. Uh, but very casually, they just uh, nod to you and continue eating the sandwich. Uh, Ichi will nod, but just continue on. And I would just say, and with you, and I'd cast a glance at Volu to see how his little legs are coping with this climb. <laughs> Um, just thinking there's a bench. <laughs> Does he need a rest? Do I need to carry him? Um, um I'm gonna go up to the the Andernite uh and say you've picked a lovely stop to rest. Oh, I come here every day. Why don't you join me for a moment? I'm Theo. I I... Sorry, what was that? Uh, I'm Theo. Any sort of like motions for you to, to sit next to him? Um, I'm Clovis, and then I'll kind of pew next to him and then carry on looking at the sunset. Um, give me a deception just because it's the first time you've used that name intentionally. Um, definitely. Come on. Well, while rolls. he's doing that, I would have maybe just motioned to Dante and Ichi just to say. Go ahead if you want. Um, I'll wait for Volu. Um, so it's up to them whether they stay or go, but mm -hmm. I'll hang around. We, we can wait. And Dante will just wander back a bit. And... Yeah, and this, this area is a purposeful. It's a cut into uh, area shelf. There's the, the, there is only the one bench, but you can see other areas where people have sat up against the railings and you, you can sort of like look out over the edge at this point. Um, you, so, uh, Volu, as you to sort of say the name uh, and sit down. I got uh, 17. Okay. You say the name and sit down and, and Theo, uh, this is, uh, nice to meet you, Clovis. Uh, you would see uh, they are human, average height. Uh, they seem to have a warm smile and generally kind demeanor. You can see that they are in simple white robes and bear the symbol, uh, a symbol, uh, sorry, a symbolized necklace. Um, you would recognize the symbol of Astera. Uh, it is a circle with a smaller circle in it, if, you, if that's easy to imagine. So a larger circle representing the planet and a smaller circle in the top right of the circle. Worship, worshippers of Target, yeah? Yeah. But they, it's, I it's, was thinking it's, an eyeball, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, uh, you would say that. Uh, more up in, more, more in the top right. Yeah. Oh, like a glint in someone's eye. Okay, now I see what you're saying. Or a lady yeah. eye. <laughs> more, more like that. Ah, uh, okay. Got you. Yeah. Or a nipple. Got you. Um, so they they will sort of pass you uh, a, a a small. They've got like a a small pot of tea, uh, and they pour out a small cup and and pass you a a, a little cup, uh, something to refresh yourselves. Uh, would would anyone else like some? They sort of ask out to the group. Don't no, take my my except one. You will uh, again pour pour a small tea. It is like a classically small cup, but then also it is like a small teapot that he's brought brought up here. Again, I'm, I'd like to insight just to. Mm -hmm. I'm being really paranoid today, but mm -hmm. just yeah. Thank you. 
Maybe not. Eleven. A again, similarly difficult to read. However, this time, your swarm doesn't seem agitated. It's still cautious, but it doesn't seem fuss uh, bothered by anything that's going on at the minute. Okay. So I, I would nod and accept a, a small cup. Okay. And as, as you all drink... Um, not that, like, by any magical means that you are revitalized, but you do feel that warmth uh, flow over you and almost gives you that uh, invigoration again in your legs to continue the rest of the journey. Um, and then, uh, and whenever you're ready, they they just uh, obviously yeah. he sits very quietly, but you you, are, you get the feeling that they are fine to talk, but they are also fine to sit in silence. Can I check? My my understanding of Cadfessi is that it's um, arcane, that they worship Larixa. So, so can I can I ask mm -hmm. him about? You're almost like, do you live here? What is a a priest of Astera doing oh, well, in a city that is Larixan? Well, I mean, it it was Larixan uh, for. An extremely long time, but we have been in the city maybe 400 years uh, after the war, especially a bordering city such as Kashfesi. Um, we we have established a, a, a small temple, um, as well as many shrines to, to increase Astera's reach. But also there are many that come here from the, from the indoor side of the world as well. Uh, it's indoor side of the mountains. Um, they, as one people, deserve representation just as much as the other. True. I feel free to uh, visit. Uh, our chantry is, uh, if when, when you reach the top, go straight for four streets and you won't miss it. Thank you. Uh, I've kind of been looking out at the... Um at the Xanagaeth um, and just watching the dust kind of pick up from the grey slate and kind of dance in the wind um, and that inner peace tends to grow and the agitation that I've been feeling all day and the news that Ichi spread kinds to settle within me um, I, I look over to um, Oh, what was his name? Theo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And kind of just give him a smile and say, thank you. You're welcome. And then kind of hand him the tea and was like, be like, well, shall we do the rest of these stairs? Let's go. Okay. Uh, you continue your climb up the staircase and um, eventually reaching its summit. Um, it does take you a minute. Um, <laughs> it is quite Just the climb. And to be fair, as you're looking, it is probably one of the largest of these staircases. But as you do look, you can see from your perch the others that are scattered around the city, um, but maybe understand why many choose to take the main road down even if it does add on time um but now you begin to enter the area known as the chantry um only ichi and so dante you actually yes you have you were last here when the chantry was first being established you know that it was majorly residential area prior to uh the war and after the war uh, and much politicaling, it was agreed that there should be a dedicated area to the worship of Astera. Um, and as you begin to move through this area, it's no less cramped, but much more calm. And there's a much uh, quieter, more peaceful uh, nature to, um, to what's uh, to the buildings and what's going on, you know, there's, uh, you see, as you move past, uh, you can see there's families and more, uh, this definitely seems to be more residential. Um, what you would notice is every time you sort of come past any of the sort of casual gathering places, there are small shrines to Astera. 
set up in in a corner or on the edge of the well or wherever it is uh, that local people tend to gather in this area um shrines have been uh, set up um you almost feel like the, the gardens are man, man, meticulously tended to um and there are colorful flowers where uh, you, the gardens that were in the mythic ward had very exotic flowers that you hadn't often seen in areas like this. <laughs> this is very natural to the area. It's yeah, it's mountain shrubs that have been cared and sculptured rather than uh, bringing in a plant that looks pretty but isn't from this area. Um, so there's a much more natural feel to the gardens here. It still holds that grey brown color it doesn't have the vibrant greens and such that the the mythic wars has um and eventually you do move through coming across uh the shrine uh, the temple to astera which to be honest as you approach it um and especially for those of you who have traveled through most of the rest of the world uh, is a very odd looking temple, almost not recognizable if not for the iconography on the front of it. Um, but it almost looks like and literally is four or five residential buildings that have been like bust through and turned into one. Um, and you can see that some of the doors have been like bricked over, but you can almost, you know, see that frame where the door used to be. Um, they have. But, uh, you know, there's the colours and the drapes, and they've de made it to look from the outside definitively a temple of Astera as the other ones are. But whereas mo uh, nearly every other city has a temple-like building dedicated to it, this was definitely just given to them um, without much thought into it. Um, and evidenced in the shrines that you see, a lot of the preaching as you arrive at the temple, there's not many people here as such. There is a few priests around talking. But you've actually seen more preaching done in the streets and just generally as you moved through gathering places than that is happening directly here at this temple. Um, you would, uh, and shortly after moving past this temple area, you would then be able to see the, sh the, the ridge that you know the bastion sits upon. Okay. Um, it, um, if anybody wants to stop, or are we uh, we can continue on. No, you would know. You would know for general uh, societal stuff that uh, that is still a place you would buy healing potions. So you can still go to a temple of Astera to purchase. They don't have loads, but they sell at a fair price. Um, are we that... far away away from the um, battered brute? So you are coming up to around where that should be. Um, you know that once you get up to the ridge up ahead, uh, you will get to the wall, inner wall of the bastion. Mm. Um, and once into that, that is where a lot of the soldier residents are, the battered brewers for, for mostly soldiers and guards, but people who aren't going. Some people stop here on their way through or the way past, but they're not. Um, it depends which side of the city you're leaving from. Depends where you want to stay, right? Um, but uh, you know that you're maybe 10, 15 minutes away from where that, sh that where that should be and maybe another five after that to get to the governance buildings. Yeah. So that, that shelf on the, the picture, Paul, that it does have like a wall around it, the bastion, but it is still quite a big area with buildings and things inside right. it. So, yeah, so that initial set shelf isn't walled. You sort of move up onto that initial shelf, which has a few buildings, but not a lot, and is a space mostly where people decide, you know, you figure out where you go and you move that way. But to move into the actual bastion itself, uh, you move through the first initial wall, which is a lot less heavily guarded. Uh, you would uh, easily be able to move past the, the two guards. They don't even check you over. It's not really that kind of thing. It's more of a uh, in case anybody's causing trouble. Chalk hold. Yeah. Um, not like the other side where you guys were questioned and searched and all, all the biz. Mm. But yes, you make your way up into the bastion. Uh, you would be able to see uh, as you pass one of the 
courtyards on the far side. The bastion area is a lot more like strict district. It's more militarized built. It's for efficient movement. The streets are kind of wider, mostly because they often move vehicles through and such. Um, but you would be able to see the battered brew over on the on the far side. Uh, but also you be the the large governance administration buildings you would be able to they're in sight as well at this point. So just to say what I've done guys is I've put the large buildings almost in the middle. It's sort of there'll be those sort of the large military buildings, there's the barracks, there's mm. um what would you call it? Like uh training grounds kind yeah. of thing. And, the watch and then and around stuff. the edges is more the where the soldiers live and the residential bits and the you know the section on the left and right is the zenith they are quite a climb up the mountain left and right um so they're almost on the peaks to the left and right of the not the peaks but the the yeah oh okay yeah so again that those shelves that that dark area is a raise up what i've also done liam quite quite a leap yeah, I can't see on... It's, it is fuzzy. I'm going to have to see if I can export more um, detail. Um, but actually, on the zenith bits on the left and the right, uh, I think you said there were sort of bridges and things as well. So yeah. imagine they're like um, apartment blocks up against the cliff face, mm. um, against the mountain, and then there might be... You know, like sometimes in the tower blocks in London, you get these walkways, don't you, between the two different tower blocks? Yeah, yeah. So, so we've got we've got that kind of thing going on so, as well. Yeah, so like if the, there might be an apartment on the actual Zenith ground bit, but then also oh. on <laughs> basically they're utilizing space. So yeah. that little tiny shelf that literally will just fit a building becomes a tower block that you can only access by walking across that footbridge to the fourth floor and then going up and down. Um yeah. and obviously again, heavily magical city, so in the zenith they're they are pretty rich compared to the rest of the city so some of them might just literally have boots that let them walk straight up to that tower block and there's no issues um but um you would be able to make your way to the fairly uh business-like standard governance buildings uh, and towards the one that is marked the uh administration building Um, as you approach, there is already the sort of signs and poster boards on the outside, and you can see that they have sort of flyered the events that are going to happen. As you can imagine, they do not want to talk to the hundreds of thousands of people that might show up to this event about, what can I answer? How do I answer it? Like, <laughs> there is a poster board. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so there's a large, large board that has... Uh, almost split into sections. You can see it split like day one, day two, day three. Um, and sort of a poster uh, pinpoints what uh, events are on on each of the days. Okay. Um, and then in the bottom corner, you are you, you would be able to see... And currently there's bunches of people gathered around this. Um, it is... It's... You don't know, well, you, again, you wouldn't super know this. You kind of know this. It's coming up to the point where they would raise the drawbridge. So even though it's quite late in the evening, um, it's still quite active as people sort of, if you want to get out before, they're not like shut for the night, but they'll, they'll get to a point where they raise the drawbridge and it's letting people out. And then at a certain point, it closes and then it's done. So the next morning. So there's people now that are like, if you don't want to get caught in the line, getting let out one at a time you should you should go now um yeah. so there's other you know merchants traders and travelers that are sort of getting the jump on the next day's journey so there's still a, quite a bit of movement in the area um, um and you would be able to see that in the bottom there in the bottom there is a stack of papers that you can see have been torn and torn and torn and they are like entry sheets so you sort of fill out what competition what name um and like there's like different uh, there's like a brief description of your entry um but obviously the what you have to do for that is on each of the things mm. um so are you looking for specific things or are you just looking over the whole biz uh dante how interested are you are you actually looking for something to enter 
Um, no. <laughs> I mean, you. I, I don't know if if you bothered in a, there's prize money for some of them. Um, you want I mean, to be fair, Dante's book. not really one for spotlight. It's quite the opposite. No, this is it. I imagine that, but you know. Um, but he's also a great cook, so he can enter the cooking competition. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> um, but so you would see that in the day one section now lovely and confusingly as all ad- administrations are they are referring to the competition days so day one is day two of the festival but yeah the crafting day the day of crafts there is the weavers contest the stone sculptures contest um and the um Jesus, I don't know, I don't have it. Weavers, I don't know. My brain's just had a moment, sorry. <laughs> Literally like my brain just stopped. Um, <laughs> That's all right. It gives me time time to actually Spell things properly. <laughs> My fingers did something strange when I tried to type sculptures. Oh, sorry, obviously. Sorry. Uh, and, and, and the, the glass blowing contest. So you know that you would be able to see from the sheets that the each bit has two compo each contest has two components, a submitted piece that can be any submitted item, it can be crafted at any point previously. Um, it will be contested versus all of the others uh, in just pure, like, quality style uh, contesting. And then there is a show aspect where you are allowed to use any means, and it's very boldly any means, (laughs) to craft something that will wow and amaze. Okay. Um, The entry, the bit where you have to write what you're going to do on the sheet of entry for these ones is you have to write your submitted piece. You don't have to write what you're going to do on the show piece. So you have to write, I am going to submit a blah, 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 so that when you do, they know you haven't made it on the, Mm. uh, you know, swapped it out or done something with it, right? It's just, uh, um, so that is glass blowing, stonework, um, and weaving. I would look at Valu and sort of nudge him and say, so are you going to enter? Um, uh, yeah, I think I will. I, th- I think I think after speaking to the tailor today, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for it. And I kind of rush up and start filling out the form. Okay, okay. Um, as you're doing that, <laughs> Lenny sort of glancing over and taking a look. You can see that on day two, the day of food, uh, there is a there is two different cooking contests. One that seems to be around like um, main meal sort of food, and one that seems to be like desserts and fancy. You know, one's description okay. is wow as an amazes with your culinary skills, and and one is. You know, one's almost like remind. Oh, oh, yes, that's it. The um, the main meal one is actually like cook a meal to remind us of of Cadfessi. It's like a cultural. Oh, okay. So the first one's like a cultural meal, and the second one's like a wowers. Okay. There are then uh, there is then a eating contest and a drinking contest. <laughs> um. Okay. The on the third day it is the arts, so there is sort of a contest for each of the arts, but you can see that they are listed as rumbles. Okay, and um, <laughs> you can actually notice on the side some uh, some of uh, some people sort of looking and talking about the rumbles, um, and you would be able to gather pretty quickly. It's almost like they get in the middle and like let's say it's the singing rumble they all sing at once and <laughs> they, and it's almost like uh they can trip each other up they can change the song they can oh my God. uh they can interfere with each other's performance you sort of gather that it's a has mystery. anyone seen eurovision the film yeah yeah, yeah. 
Um, but I was, th- I was it's, thinking more pitch perfect, but yeah. There's, there's, there's almost this like there's a group on the side that are talking about uh, in during the last one where uh, one of the one of the singers was pushed off the stage mid show with a magical hand. Uh, it's like those sorts of things fully are all go. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> and obviously, day four is the uh, Doom Hakra. Um, and you can see that that one actually doesn't have that many entrants. It has maybe currently uh, 12 entrants. However, you also notice that lots of them aren't entered under names of like riders. It's like company names. Okay. There's, there's like, uh, there is like, the, you would notice there is the Lyrix and Arcanum and the Verdant Circle and like different factions have vehicles in this race. Um, but you're not seeing like uh, you, you would actually wait. No, it's not been long enough. You wouldn't see uh, uh, the names uh, for for anyone you recognize or any singular people. Um, that one, as you look over, does say that you need to have your own Aether Stream vehicle, or your sponsor must provide one. Um, oh, okay. So. For money wise, the craft bo- all three of the craftsmen's contests are uh, 100 gold, 75 gold, and 50 gold for the first, second, third. I thought you were going to say for entry then. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, each, any of the contests is five, uh, five silver entry. Okay. Um, the so food. Yeah, on, sorry, sorry, on the last day, is it just the Doom Hacker? Is there no, any so, so that's not the last stuff? day. So it's just the Doom Hacker. Normally, it would be multiple um, combat tests, but this okay. one, this year, it is just the Doom Hacker. But you would know right. from that, it does say on the thing that it is a race around the city. Okay. Um, and it also notes that entrance can be uh, taken to see the course. Uh, before, but you yeah, have no, to, I was thinking there's um, no like archery contest or or anything. No, of that. essentially, it's taken up by the fact that you could just shoot people and win the Doom Hacker by killing people with your bow. Uh, like, <laughs> it's but it, right. all, all of the combat has been sort of encompassed into this, In this any, anything big... go race. Um, okay, so, uh, sorry, the food contests are uh, 20 gold for the winner. Second, pl- second, and third place just get like honors. Mm-hmm. Um, the arts contests are uh 25 gold each, okay. Um, and then the Doom Hackra is as stated, I think, thousand and um, a, a, favor. a, a favor from mm. the current president of the two. Uh, so originally, I wasn't really like this. Is- like Dante doesn't really care about any of those he's gonna be hide. I wanna go in the Doom Hulker. Are you saying that out loud? No, because this is Chris. Dante, Dante doesn't Dante, care. Dante wouldn't wouldn't care. But I mean I mean Ichi definitely would look them all over and be like, oh exciting to be sure. I mean Ichi's just upbeat about all of it. Like um but how do I uh, obviously uh mm. Clo- uh, Volu signing as Clovis, and do you remember to sign as Clovis the first time around? Yes, I do. I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'd give the full name that I've concocted in my head, which is Clovis Notwise. Okay, <laughs> lovely. Notwise spelled K N O T. Oh, brilliant! Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, so then, uh, you would say that I'm going to gonna submit submit my cloak as my uh, submitted entry. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then nice. Feel I like. like it. Whipping, do you pay five silver now, or yes, you would pay five silver and and yeah, uh, so. go inside and you give in. So you sort of take your entry inside with because you, you and again people enter multiple contests, but you would sort of fill out all your entries, do your money, go I in. I mean, I'm I'm sort of looking and thinking that right, prize money's good, right? We're we're trying to make money here. So I suppose eating and drinking might be something that she'd go for, but I don't think she can cook to save a life. Um, I mean, it, it, I think. Uh, but really, Ella, Ella, it, I think it, you can be, cook survival she can, food. You can, you can. She cook can the kill food. an animal and skin it and cook it, but I don't think it's going to be like cordon bleu, right? It's not. And desserts, baking cakes, and things would be like completely alien <laughs> to her. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I also don't see her as somebody who sings or dances or does any of that sort of stuff. I would love Eleni to be like a singer and dancer. <laughs> I would be just, just but amazing. Been there, done that. <laughs> with, with a couple of uh, other... Volo yeah. would have been up for that, but he was too excited about the weaving contest to pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, she's sort of looking at the Doom Hakra thing and going, that's a lot of money. I mean, that could be really useful. But we need a ship. We'd, we'd need a We'd need an ether stream vehicle, wouldn't we? Yeah, and again, as you're looking, it sort of taught, it, it literally does say in the rules like um, that you can enter with your own personal ether stream vehicle. However, you would notice there is a little subsection that says uh, all vehicles must be reg- registered with the city officially, um, or Zikar crystals must be registered with the fi- city what, officially. What did it say about you've got to have your own vehicle, or you have to be sponsored? Underneath that, it says so you that, could get a sponsor. Um, uh, if you are being sponsored for the uh, race, that your sponsor must fill out the application uh, with stamp of uh, recognition. Um, and that's, I think, Eleni and the others you would gather, the ones that are company names, that's a sponsor. And it's most of the ra- it's nearly all of the races right now. I mean, I wonder I how you get have, a sponsor. I think we should just kill someone and steal their like, ride. <laughs> I feel like I should just play an evil character at this point. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> clearly, I've got that urge. That's but... obviously what you're after, Chris. I mean, that's not exactly a surprise at this yeah. point. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering about those gnomes that we saw on the way in. That that crystal was that crystal was knackered, wasn't it? It was destroyed, but they had the well, vehicle. You never, you never saw the crystal. You saw the crumbs saw of some shards. Of, of yeah, it. you saw the shards, and just as you were about to be like. Tell us where it is. The the, the wyverns attacked. Um, I mean, I'm wondering what happened to them. And you look up the names, not like you don't see a name on the board that is like personal. So it's like, uh... I don't know, guys. I mean, this looks like fun, and the money would be good. The favor would be good. Dante would be pretty good at it. Did you see the way he took out that wyvern? I'm I'm just going to look around. Is there anybody close enough to hear us if we're talking? I mean, I know you said there was loads of people. Yeah, I mean, there's people around, but there's no one's really paying any attention to you directly. I'm going to lean in and sort of pull everybody a bit closer and say, a favour might be very useful for certain people who are looking for us. Or looking for you, and I'm going to look at Ichi and look at Clovis. Yeah. Do you think something like that would help? I mean, a favor could be anything. I'm sure that you and Dante can handle these people, but. He would also look at the board and uh, he would absent mindedly sort of say to Dante, I don't see any businesses up there that belong to them. You should do it. Maybe they have. Maybe they want in and don't have riders yet. We could always ask. I think we should get involved. Well, keep your eyes open then. Uh, I think, AJ, we like, keep your eyes open for opportunities to enter. If there are sponsors, surely there are sponsors that are looking for sponsees. So hang on, are you saying? <laughs> Just check something. Yeah, she's not overly bright. So, are you saying that perhaps those people that I just mentioned might actually sponsor us to race? Oh well, I mean, if they want a, a race, I mean, I assume they would want the favor or the money or something involved for supplying the vehicle, but. Or were you suggesting that it was safe to enter because they're not? No, I was saying maybe they would uh, want a racer in the stakes. Um, but I don't know that for certain, but I, it's just a thought. Surely if there are people to sponsor, it must benefit the sponsor somehow. I mean... How much would they take if they sponsored us? Mm. Good question. 
maybe that is you're down to the deal you make with your sponsor. Maybe some of them don't want any money, but you have to wear their colours and fly their flags. I don't know. Perhaps that's a counter offer, though. Instead of you randomly owing them something in the future that you've no idea of, maybe this is a way of paying off that debt. Maybe it's worth an ask, but for now as well, it might be worth us just looking out for if anybody's looking for, uh, maybe we check the tavern wanted boards. Maybe somebody's posted yeah. that they need a driver or, um, you know, they need a team. Okay. If, we, if we're set do on we, answering. Do we see the, any of the gnomes' names on the sheet? No. You, this is, you don't see anything signed up that would sort of A, B, because you know from hit overhearing that they were like locals from a near, from a village near the forest. So they're not, they're definitely not sponsored. Um, so, but you don't see any unsponsored names up there right now. Okay. Um, and you know, there's maybe, uh, you've got another... They were the fire bolts, weren't they? I'm just looking. They were the fire bolts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, so you and you know, there's there's still two or three days till the festival begins. Um, this is the this is the first of three days. So, you do know, they have it, to enter before the three days start? Yeah. Um, I actually think no. I think entry to any contest would have to be done forty eight hours prior to the contest starting. So mm-hmm. you can enter the fifth day contest in like on the food day. It just has to be done within forty eight hours of that event happening. Okay. I'm genuinely trying to think of how Dante would be any use um in a race. Just set all the cars on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Throw coins at them. I mean, yeah, it, it, <laughs> even if you've not got specific uh, skills, you're going to be moving very quickly through racer-like turns and circuits. And... I mean, what's your decks like? Maybe you could drive. To be fair, my decks are damn good. So maybe you could actually be the driver, right? Uh, I've, I've got a plus, a plus five on my decks. Oh, wow. Like, and if that's not including deck saves or acrobatics... Because we're going um, to have to dodge stuff, right? We're going to be driving pretty fast, and in theory, there other people could shoot at us, throw things at us. I'd say as you're thinking this, though, so Eleni, the only Aether Stream vehicles you've seen are like almost like mini buses, like the the mm. cloud vehicle ones. They don't move very fast. Uh, um, but we did also see the guys on like the hoverboard kind of stuff, didn't we? We did. And you saw the t- t- taken apart version of what the gnomes had, and that mm. looked very different. Uh, that didn't look anywhere near as protected. Because, um... yeah, what we've been seeing at the moment is sort of big platforms, wagons, um, vehicles to carry stuff, right, yeah. rather than anything particularly fast. How, How do we know the track? It does say that entrance can request a guided uh, tour, but it does seem like you need to enter to to get a direct uh, look at where it's it is. But it's not going through any of the actual city. Only the very, very beginning will go out of the arena. There is basically, right. and there, there's probably, you're estimating maybe about 200 foot of road before they exit the city. Right, this so is all da- the down in the crucible. Then. So it's pre- yeah. yeah, yeah, down in the crucible, and it's predominantly the outside of the city, in between the mountain pass or uh, the crevasse. Um, it mentions that you guys haven't seen down into the crevasse, other than when you crossed it. Um, but you do know, obviously, that the mines and all that go underneath Cadfessy. Um, but my mind just went to oh, this is where you would really be great at having loads of um, whatever they're called, like rods of a uh, move unmovable un- yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Just just click that and just let it down like in a bottleneck, and then just watch it tear through everything that yeah, went. we haven't we haven't got any of those on that um, patch 
cloak, have we? I you don't. don't. But you do have some crazy shit like iron doors. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Just go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a hole won't really do anything for something that floats. Well, you, Dante, goes. give me an intelligence because I this will be what you can remember I was of about to... what you have heard of how these machines work. Okay, because so I was just about to say, if it's levitate, then obviously it would, wouldn't it? Because it's a certain amount, but um, well, I don't know shit, so it might as well be flying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like... Oh wait, hang on, my intelligence is normal. I thought I was saying you, you've got good, good you're intelligence. Yeah. You've just got no, you've got no perception. It, it's not. It's still not great. It's a twelve, but I would say it's enough to know. So you, from what you have heard, uh, Zikar at most can float ten foot off the ground. The question would be about how fast the vehicle is going. If it can clear it yeah. in one, it's just going to clear it. But if you could get it at a point where it bottlenecks or has to slow down for a turn, you know what I mean? Like if they have to slow for a turn, it would drop to be relevant with the ground. Mm. And they, would have, they, would, they would have to maneuver to come back up. Basically. Quick question, by the way. I, could, I know I, I remembered there were some things for this, but the hole does it have to go on a horizontal it has to go on the ground okay couldn't remember if that was what we said or if it's just going to be like a ha-ha yeah, just in front yeah, of us and like just, a wily coyote just into a hole, <laughs> into the of the hole. you just, we'll just paint a door and then kid, leave it yeah um I was how much is the gravitational it? force of it in what sense sorry like it's levitating. How much force is there it? Is, well, it's magic, so it just does. <laughs> I, I was um, going to ask about the because if it can only if it can only hover that much, then there's obviously a limit. So then, yeah, that limit no, so, is based it, on it is, it is basically you and you've seen this. Like so, the big iron sheets that were floating materials, they had multiple Zikar crystals at points. So you de- and and the the vehicles only had one larger one. So you know that there's definitely limits and yeah. balance is a factor. It's not like it auto balances it horizontal. If you only put one in the middle and then overload it on the left, it will just tip. Um, but what you have also seen the hoverboard kids. There is a way that you can almost use the levitation when they were riding into the wall. The pushback as it touched that plane mm. allow it was what was allowing them to like jump away from the wall with it. So there is a level of if the vehicle is light enough and the user is skilled enough, you can get some jump out of it. You can get some dip and move. I mean, but there's also nothing stopping us in there. We've seen people pulling this stuff along or, or having animals pulling it along. I'm assuming there's nothing to stop us actually. I'm thinking like engines and rockets and stuff, right? But there's nothing to stop us propelling this, is there, in a direction? Well, you, if you, if the rules on the thing is magic or a um, engine. Right, okay. So they're specifically stopping. You can't use horse drawn. You can't use That's um, cool. That's cool. Animals. But I was just thinking, you know, we're saying we've not seen anything really move that fast, but we've not seen anything with like a jetpack on the back of it either. So... Ooh. Right. You haven't even you haven't seen one of these cinder smoke engines, and it's it's listed. So, like in the allowed things, there's the cloud engine, there is the cinder smoke engine, okay. and then there is any magical means of propulsion. Okay. But it has to has to have an aether stream. The aether, the bit that sort of makes it sort of aether stream, and they will the judges are will sort of check this. The, it's the combination of a self-propelling thing using Zikar. Yeah. So, if, so if you just had a, a magical thing that blasts fire backwards, they would accept that as you have attached a, a Zikar crystal and you have made a jet fire, right? Like, they would accept that. You could also do the same with big wind fans, right? They, they'll allow things like that. They just don't allow you to strap four horses to the front of it and say, yo. <laughs> okay. But what if the horses have Zikar crystals in their hooves? Well, if the horses are mechanical, <laughs> different story. But basically, and and for Volu, this probably doesn't seem anything, but Dante and, and for each of the same, but for Dante and um, uh, Eleni, it actually reminds you a little bit of the way that the Yixen kind of operate over in the West, in the 
they're not say they're not like trying to ban outright but they're trying to shift the focus there's almost like this move away from uh don't look at the the nomad caravans being pulled by things out in the desert like look at these shiny new vehicles that you have to buy and pay for and there's mm -hmm. this pulling of like they don't want people to be reminded that actually you could do the same with a brick of crit with a car and a, and a horse um i was then just thinking about ichi's um magic elk with a Zikar crystal stuck on the bottom of it. Yeah. <laughs> so technically, it's magic. It's magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yes, uh, you, you ponder on that. I say, uh, Volu, you would be able to head in. As you head in, there is a very bored looking attendant sat next to four boxes that basically you can just go up, put your piece. As you're moving up and putting your piece in, they sort of go, uh, which contest is it? Uh, um, it's the um, weaving contest on day one, uh, day two, day two. Submit your submitted piece 48 hours before the uh, event begins, please, so that it can be uh, displayed. I have to give it you now. Well, not now. He sort of looks. He's like, uh, two day. In two days? Yeah, so the day before the festival, you'd have to give it in. And then you'll get it back on. I mean, you can go pick it up whenever, but the judges need to assess it. We need to set it for display. Um, is that necessary? Can can unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, so. If I mean, you could always submit another piece, um, but the unfortunately, all all submitted pieces have to be submitted and judged together. Right before the contest uh, is part of the process, unfortunately. But when will he get the cloak back? Uh, upon uh, the 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 show oh, festival, yeah, the, the the show. Yes, the so and, basically, and... when when you go to do your fancy one that's going to wow and amaze us, that will be presented next to your cloak, uh, and you will take both after after the contest. And you can guarantee the safety of the item. Yes, the, the, all items uh, put in are, are insured for the the price of the uh, for the price of the item. It, but this item is this item is priceless. Um, well, uh, if if the value of it is sentimental, we cannot obviously match such a. Uh, maybe that is not that uh, an item to be submitting to a. A citywide contest, but I assure that you, they are they are all kept very safe, and we have never had an instance of breaking or theft. Uh, where 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 are they kept? Oh, within the fort. And then, to uh, any insights and um, passive insights, that this is just general procedure. Yeah, Most yeah. people are entering something they've made that's not personal, Ooh. like this. Um, You kind of look at Eleni and almost look dumbfounded. It, cause... It's up to you. I I think that it will probably be safe. I suspect that the other items are maybe not worth as much. But then also, do you remember the, the weaver, the, the clothes merchant? He said that there was another lady who'd spent months creating her item. I kind of, oh, it really doesn't want to give it up. Um, the guy sort of will say like more, more to pass you on than like care. He's all like, well, uh, you know, I mean, you still got, uh, you know, till two day, two days to enter, so you can always think about it. I mean, if you want to submit a different, a different item for the submitted stage, that that that's fine as well. Uh, I'll hand it in and just put it down. Put the piece of paper on the desk with the five silver and walk out. Okay. And to be clear, sorry, you keeping the clock now and coming back to give it later, yeah. or are you giving? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not giving. I'm not yeah, giving that clock up a second earlier than I need to. Yeah, that's fine. Um, they will put take the silver, put the the note into the entry. Um. 
the I'd say Dante and Ichi that were probably waiting outside would see Volu uh, exiting. Um, and Eleni. I, I kind of just look at I look over at them and and give them like a little nod and then wait for Eleni. Yeah. Um... I'm really tempted to just do an eating contest because otherwise there's nothing to do. And I mean, like they said, you don't have to decide today. Entries up to forty eight hours before, yeah. so you could you could do <laughs> the first day of, right now. You could do the first day of the festival and still enter the the food thing if you wanted to. Yeah, I might do that later. Okay, well, so you have made your way through the city. Uh, you have managed to enter. Uh, Volu at the very least with some thoughts for maybe something else to enter into um, of things that you need to do obviously the battered brew is a few nights away before you're supposed to meet uh, that guard if you are going to meet him and, and give him the monies um, other than that you are left to your devices it is about half three I think um... Eleni's family were vets and grew their own, had their own garden and vegetables and that kind of stuff. So she's very nature animal sort of focused anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking maybe in terms of downtime, it might be that she want to might start learning some herbalism. Um, you know, maybe to be able to make her own potions or alchemy, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of our next steps for research, we need a library that's maps geography you know information mm -hmm. about the world because we're trying to find half over or arvovo <laughs> whichever, whichever one um i'm trying to remember what it's actually called now. It's it, like, it was oh, arvovo oh, oh. and then we then yeah, you thought it you, was half you, over you've, mis you've misspoken and i'm struggling so. to i'm strongly struggling to remember actually what it's called yeah. yeah yeah so um so there's that but also We've just twigged that that whole thing about Astera dying, that's the first time we've sort of talked to each other about that. Mm -hmm. So we might want to do some, actually, how do we find out if she really is dying? How do we stop that? And that might even mean a visit to the temple at some point. Okay. So, yeah, so you stand where you are in the, ba in the bastion. Um, the, the city is moving back and forth. You hear the calls go out for... Um, the the gate close uh gate close in 30, 30 minutes um and and that's the initial beginning of when they'll start to let people out one by one um and it becomes a bit more staggered um but you have the city from here you you are able you can so from where you are in the bastion you can see every area of um the city itself so you can see the the shelves uh, sticking out from the zenith wards uh, that are almost even slightly higher than where you are right now. Um, and then below the Chantry, you can see uh, almost much more clearly where everything is, uh, looking down towards the Mythic Ward. Um, so you know you would be able to see the two buildings that you passed earlier, or, or for when you first entered, um, that you know they seemed to be the Scriptorium and the Library. But there is a, also in the far... Uh, east side of the city, or the, the right side of the map at least, in that little, uh, you know, the little U-bend cut into the, uh, of the mm -hmm. shelf of yeah. the Mythic Ward, there's a very large glass building uh, in that, that just sticks out as, like, entirely different than everything around it. Okay. Um, but yeah, you could very easily make your way. None of you have been... Before we leave the Bastion, though, there was that... Sorry, did we say we can't hand off the stuff, to, the money to the guard yet? Yeah, he was on job down at the... Uh, right. Foot, foot hill, um, until... It, day it was, one, wasn't it? Yeah, the day, festival? day one of the festival, yeah. Right, okay, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> Which is... T that's two days away. Yeah, so basically you are on the first of three days. Uh, so after mm. today, you will be two full days till the festival begins. I've got um, something that I'm going to... Um, Ichi's going to give me a hand with, so I want to get advantage of my rolls. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it that are you wanting? 
I'm going to sow some rumours. Ooh. Interesting. Because <laughs> I'm going to make some rumours around about a <clears throat> diverse, highly classed set of um, racers interested in the uh, Doom Hackra who oh. are considering um, finding, uh, finding sponsorship. I I like the mysteriousness and I kind of like give him a bit of advantage to that. I'll accept a guidance on this uh, while yeah. while I'm doing it as well. Um, and you can't use it for this uh, the, for this stuff, but I am going to give you inspiration because that's a oh nice a very very clever little use of the of the rules there. Okay. Um, so it's a so what it says here. It's DC 15, Deception or Persuasion. Which one is it? Sorry, is it? Uh, which one is it under? Sewing Rumours. I found, like, I wasn't sure the first one I was reading. It didn't look like it was genuine, so I Googled it and, and found it in another place as well. I think it cost me, like, a gold per day, and trying to find... Um, so, so it takes a gold per day. Um, the DMA... And then the it, it depends yeah. on the size of the thing. Where I think it was like, it was like two D four if it was a village, two D six if it worked like whatever this means. So it was something along those lines. That, 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 is that in the downtime activities? So it's not in the main one, but it is in a GM binder one, which I will still accept because they are still. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, this comes from me just rooting around looking for stuff because. I couldn't find where like there's ever. <laughs> so I just went. I was somewhere, and if it if it doubles up in a different place, I class it as genuine. It's usually pretty. I mean, By it, the way, I mean so we do have Xanathars on D and D Beyond. So yes, that, I'm that also going there. to let me have a look as well at because it can also count as potentially carousing because that's about making friends, making contacts. It, it, that's core to the rule, so I might make a mix of both. Um, mm. So that's like making contacts, isn't it? And stuff. Yeah, this is it because there's no role in the one I read online. So I'm going to keep a gold per day. So it's a gold per day while you want to sustain it. That will go up if you're. That will only go up unless I will ask you if, if you're who your intended audience is. So if you're trying to find. Richie Riches that want some people to run it, or if you're looking more low end, it it doesn't change your chances in finding. It just changes the kind of clientele you might come. So <laughs> I was actually going to cover both, and that was why I was asking for advantage because I was going to have Ichi doing. We'll be working as a team to okay. do different points. Um. So I will say the gold then will be. So it's one gold a day for your basic general i'm going to say it's an additional two so it's going to be three gold a day total the additional two is that just you you have to spend a bit more in the fancier pubs and you, you, you know you have to be around that a bit more mm -hmm. um and i will need a whispered persuasion check no advantage with guidance yeah mm-hmm and is it persuasion or deception? I mean, to be honest, I don't think um, it matters. But I mean, it's up to you. I'll, I'll leave it up to you. I, do you think? Do you think you're lying, or are you telling truths? Are you talking about the fact that you have? I'm a totally lying. And... I'm not like I, I don't. No, no, none of us have any skill in these things. I was going to say. I'm it's just described us as yeah, yeah, talented, yeah, racers. talented racers. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, talented. To be honest, though, I mean, so it's exactly <laughs> racer? the same. <laughs> Talented at other things. Okay, okay. Uh, it's, all ho it's all homogenous. 19. Okay. And can you also roll me a d hunt? Oh, sorry. You even asked me to do that. Sorry. sorry. Don't stress. Um, <laughs> do, 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 me a, do me a d hundred. Um, Try talking over you. <laughs> uh, 98? On a d8? I thought he said D hundred. Yeah, and a D eight. Oh, uh, not, uh, because of the ninety eight. Sorry. So right, okay. So D hundred was ninety eight, and a D eight is eight. 
Okay. I'm either really successful or literally got no one. This is, <laughs> this is, there's no middle ground. <laughs> okay. Uh, you will hear, hear, how have you uh, been, where have you stated that this group stays, drinks, resides? What has been the, how are you um, planning to right. receive the message? So I would have said, because there's only one place where I know, because I don't actually know where the other guys are staying. I'm going to say the place that we are staying, which, which is? was wherever that place was called. The, the something banner, banner wasn't it? Banner. Banner. There you go. He's going there. Um, <laughs> so you're saying that a group of talented racers and where are the rust bloody bloody banner? banner. Um, looking... We're in the rust bucket as well. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys are at the rusty bucket. Um, yeah. Which one's uh, a nicer place, by the way? We're about equal. It's literally okay. just that um, what theirs is in the forge ward, and mm. yours is by the arena. So to be fair, yours is probably more expensive, but it's not nicer. It's just a, a better location. More touristy. Yeah. So it's, it's a more <laughs> prime location, whereas whereas the yeah, rusty, no, bu- rusty yeah, bucket no. is down there. So I'll keep it where I said it was. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, you 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 begin those rumors. I I really like that. I, I do. Me too. I, I think that's wonderful. That wouldn't have even occurred to me. Um. So, but uh, in the meantime, because that's just going to be ongoing, right? So like that's just going to be every now and again, you're just dropping that rumor in places. Um. Do I do we hear Dante doing this or as he's doing it? Yeah, 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 because Volo's well, I mean, been well, guiding if, if you're around me when I'm doing it, I mean, so me so and I, I don't, we Have you come out of the thing yet? Come out of where, what? Come out of the administration office. Yeah. I was outside oh. it anyways, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside. No, I was wondering what name you've given this group of racers, and if you say the secret passions... I mean, has, has he? Has he it crossed my mind. I'm not going to be in such <laughs> big trouble. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I much want to say call it Ratchet and Clank, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, <clears throat> bear with me with that one, and I'll think about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yes, in the meantime, you can begin making your way down. So again, uh, and I, I feel like I might already know Volu's answer, but from here you can make your way down the main path towards the Mythic Ward or um, go back the way you came um, down the two tall flights of stairs. Down is much easier. But um... Well, could we go past the temple first? The temple's on... Yeah. That first level, isn't it? The temple's on the chantry. Yeah, yeah, very easily. And then we could head to the mythic after that. Oh, and I know, sorry, that Dante's probably not as interested in the temple, but I think we need yeah, to do some probably research there as well. Yeah. And, okay. I, and I, I also, I don't know if, if the research that you guys need to do would be in the same place as the research that we need to do. I mean, I would say thing. as well, one thing to note, Dante, uh, in terms of yes, arcane is very big. The other people that do a lot of like binding and stuff, and curses and all that sort of crap is temples. I imagine you have already talked to temples of Astera, and with it being one religion all round, it doesn't change often the answer. Um, you, I, I imagine that you would be more likely to talk to a temple in an area that was dedicated to Astera rather than an, an offshoot temple. Um, but it is worth remembering, you would know that, that like there are some high priests that are pretty good at binding uh, at de- at other entities and, and banishing other entities and such. So worth, worth a note. Um, but yes, you would be able to make your way back out of the Bastion, um, Make your way down the sloped main road of an easy access before taking, diverting off the path and making your way towards uh, where you remember the temple is. Um, you would be able to arrive back at the temple. Again, it it, it is odd. It's an odd building to, to be calling a temple as it doesn't look very well cared for and it doesn't look very well um, built. But 
nonetheless, it, it's clean and the atmosphere feels nice. Um, nobody, ne you would notice this, and you have noticed this generally with people of the Andonite religion. They don't always just like approach to talk about things. They might stand and preach. They might talk about things they know, but they they're very laid back in a. Uh, people tend to come talking to them more than they need to go talking to people. Um, when the god is the planet that people stand on, it, it, they, they, they see it as it's not really necessary <laughs> for them to do as much, unless it's in specific areas. Um, you also will know, or each year would might point out, that in both of the deserts for a long time, worship to Astera was not welcome. Um, and was resisted for a long time. Um, so I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I pretty much was only listening with about a quarter of an ear whilst I was trying to think of like everything, like, think of names <laughs> Dash and Drifters. Dash and Drifters. No, no, uh, this is an open question Dash and Drifters, D and D. As in dashing drifters or dash hund drifters or dash. So I, 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 I heard I heard the dog dax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, because is it dash um, and I was going to dash drifters and drifters? Okay. Or oh. drift drift and dashes. <laughs> Doesn't have uh, the same ring. No, I, I don't know. I quite like dash and drift, dash and drifters. I'll, I'll keep thinking because I don't think it's. I don't I'll put I'll put it there as a question mark for now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. But yeah, so uh, you would uh, you would see the uh, the a few priests sort of uh, outside in the garden area, sort of just generally tending. A few people meditating nearby. Um, but yeah, you would be you would be able to either enter or you, again, like th this area generally seems there are people milling around. And before we go in, I would just stop. Volu and sort of pulling back a little bit and just say you you know earlier when the fortune teller said to me about Astera and about her her dying and then you said something as if you knew that is, is there something wrong with her this is this is why I tried to find my home I I was happy in where in the Fey. I had adequate life, um, but things started to wither and change, and something must be wrong. And I just had, I'd say, a calling to come and try and find out what's been going on. Do you think Ichi knows this? I mean, he's he's literally one of the first races, right? If we're going to believe the stories, we could we could ask. No harm in asking. See if he feels any different. I, I would. I would. Include Ichi and Dante probably as well, and just say, "Did you know this? Are you aware of this?" Um, did they hear the fortune as well? No, their perceptions are not high enough. Um, <laughs> but uh, Dante, not sorry, Dante Ichi would so definitely not have heard this before specifically obviously there's there there is the historic tales of uh Larixa wounding astera if um if the andonites are to be believed um he would say that he was brought up Larixan. most of the nomads in the deserts are Maybe the reason why i didn't like him <laughs> um, but he himself doesn't actually really uh, and he would tell you his uh, oath is not to uh, either faction or he doesn't care whether it's Lurikson or 
um, of Steren or Andonite. It's to protect the people who live on this planet from things not from this plane. Okay. So he doesn't really have any stake in the... And they've been quite busy recently with... Uh... Oh, Dante. Mm. And Dante. And for Dante, <laughs> uh, obviously it's up to you how uh, you've got a longer history with, with this stuff. You're probably, and actually, I was going to ask you this. I don't know how um, you're not old enough to remember the destruction of Giskia, but like it's still a thing, even four, five hundred years on, that like every bad thing when you were growing up, your granddad probably blamed on Larixa or religion. It's that that was the general stance. Obviously, you've then had a few hundred years of milling around and experiencing the different religions. Um, so it's up to you what you sort of gathered your opinion is of them. Um, whether you still have the Giski and fear of them or whether you don't. I feel like I think he would have, he won't have a fear of any of the religions. Because, say, majority of this, the majority of all that time, he has not been himself. Mm. And he has always been trapped. So it was a case of perpetual torment, as it were. Mm. So anything other than what he has felt and experienced, like has seen and been forced to do, is almost seen as a blessing in itself. That anything that he hasn't been able to, that any any time when it's he this this time now is pretty much unheard of. What well, mm. is unheard of? So I would say he hasn't got he doesn't have those kind of same things because he only really has one fear. Yeah. He's obviously scared of other things, but there's one thing that will, will just completely dominate him. Yeah, and it's not relevant to religion. So, no, no, yeah. um, no, that's fair. <laughs> Okay. Um But uh, uh, yeah, you would say I mean uh, if you are sure if you if you think you feel something, maybe maybe it is worth talking to them. Maybe they have communed with Astara. I know that they do that in the Sacred Isles. Okay. Maybe maybe we should talk to the priests here to see if they know anything. Um sorry, Clovis. <laughs> Um, and I'll look straight at Ichi and Dante and say, "I don't want to hold you guys up either. I mean, we could we could always meet later if if you want to go and do your own research or your own things." It's... I do think so. It's probably likely that we would separate. So I was, well, was going to say this would probably be some of the time that you're sowing rumors and that's that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. So, so this they, this is easy yeah. that time and you're. Where do you want to? Where should where shall we meet? Well, should we agree to maybe come and see you at the Bloody Banner tonight? If that's um, where you've said we're going to be, <clears throat> that would be good. If we, uh, and that's on is... our way down, isn't it? Yeah, that's right but... down to the bottom. So yeah, we, we can the then go back to the forge and go back to to stay at our place for the evening. But yeah. we could meet them and have dinner or whatever, couldn't we? Tonight? And each will say, uh, may, maybe it's uh, just gone sunset. We should. Uh... You know, and Eleni, you're looking. It's maybe two, two hours ish, two and a bit hours. Um, cool. So we can we can meet for 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 tea. But yeah, so um, <laughs> okay, Dante and uh, Ichi d disappear to craft some nefarious <laughs> rumors. Nefarious. I still, I still fucking love it. Um, <laughs> as Eleni and Volu are left. In front of the haphazard temple. Um, I mean, let's let's try find a priest, right? Let's try find someone to talk to. Okay, so you you head, you head on in, and it inside is immediately different again. Um, and and obviously you know Voli with the access to magic. Although this looks more of a mix of like worked stone with magic as opposed to a lot of the rest of the city that has been just like they just shaped stone to look like a building um this is definitely like 
somebody used magic in the crafting of that stained glass rather than uh, th those sorts of things. The first two floors of the buildings have been hollowed out to give, as you step in, this almost grand hall feel. Um, the plants and d uh, decor of the of the outsides, and you can see as you've stepped into like pews, as there's like a, a space to give sermon. Um, the upper areas, the, there is a balcony level on that second floor, but they seem to have used still some of the rooms on that level. Um, and there is currently a uh, there is currently a a floral groomed on um, with almost like purple and uh, red flowers uh, stick uh, petals sticking up over the shoulders and. Uh, almost draping down a little, almost as if they're a little dehydrated, but they don't look uh, in any disrepair. Like a bit wilted. Yeah, not wilted. It's almost like drooping, as if they're okay. wet almost and like uh, holding down. Um, and they are currently just preparing uh, a small like altar made of a tree stump that's growing upwards and outwards in like a grasping uh, stance. Okay. I would approach and um, try and remember what the hell we say. I would say, a stare guide you, <laughs> as, uh, as, I, am, ah, as uh, I approach. And to you too. Uh, I am afraid you are a little early for the sermon, but you may pray if you wish. I must, uh, however, prepare things. Um, they are sort of, they, they will start, they're there listening, but they're just still sort of moving things around. Yeah, I would, I would say, um, thank you. I do not wish to disturb you from your task. However, my friend and I wondered if there was somebody we could talk to. Uh, well, uh, I myself am just an acolyte. My name is Lefton. Um, Lefton. Yeah. Um, the the high priest Ar Arkana. Uh, so A R C K no, A R C E N A I R. Arkana. Arkana. Okay. Um, the high priest Arkana is, is currently preparing, and uh, they might be willing to see visitors. I could ask them if you wish. Please, if you could. Um, they. Will they uh, point in in a direction and cast the spell you would recognize as message? Um, as they sort of whisper, um, High Priest, there is uh, somebody who wishes to speak to you if you have a moment. And they pause. He can see you for a short time. Head on through to the back. And he sort of like motions or one of the long leafy arms over towards a, a back door that sort of there's curtains and a drapery sort of not hiding it, but shielding it from direct view if you were sat in the in the pews praying um, uh, that okay. you would be able to move through to. Go on, Chris. The Crimson Blaze. Ooh, like that one. I was wondering, yeah. <laughs> I'm still thinking. Uh, uh, I wondered if um, Liam would appreciate that one as well. I like it. You could have the clandestine spirit, <laughs> which is just cinnamon for secret passions. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that was good. Um, I still think putting you two together in the same group is dangerous. It's, <laughs> it's magic, absolute magic. Oh wow! I, I may have made a mistake. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so... Bolu, Bolu trips down the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so uh, you do a motion through, and you would be able to you head through the door, and there is a small um, corridor that you can see the stairs leading up to the next section. So, um, Eleni, there is a door open, but you would also have gathered, you've seen um, 
you've seen people use the message spell it's usually point in their direction and he yeah. didn't point upwards so you, you know they sort of pointed on a, on a flat level so okay. there is stairs immediately but the corridor wraps round and heads further in and you can see a double doors that are currently open and a, and a glow coming from there as the first set of steps that you take uh you would hear a uh, this way through here I, I don't have too long, but I'm willing to talk if if you need. Um, as you sort of make your way in and round, uh, there is a very basic, simple office with a uh, a simple wooden desk, uh, shelves, and a few adornings of religious iconography. Um, besides that, there's not a great deal. You can see some scriptures on the side that seem to be again of religious uh, texts, um, and you see a. A dwarf, very old, um, seems to be a female, and they are currently sort of uh, arranging their their dress for the sermon, which it, it seems very similar to what Theo, uh, priest Theo, was wearing, uh, but almost with the just extra adornings, the you know the the cape on the, but they, it's still very simplistic, and you do know this of the Andonites, they're a very uh, reductivist style uh religion they believe that you know you don't need a lot to you you know we're here to live a good life but you don't need a lot to do that if you do it properly um but okay. uh they are they would say uh you you can take a seat and there is uh, water on the side uh, i i am just getting ready but uh how can i help you um thank you i'm gonna look at volo and sort of almost be like are you okay for me to talk um i kind of look and as we've been walking through it's kind of something has been i've had a, like a, a feeling of something that i can't quite comprehend so i kind of look to eleni and just give a nod to okay. begin with so i would say um good afternoon um I, i'm sorry to disturb you we won't keep you for long um my my companion and I have some concerns about the well-being of Astera. And as you say that, you would see them pause in their shuffling and sort of their eyes in the mirror meet yours. We have unusual backgrounds and... This is not just a feeling or a, a fear or something that we imagine in our sleep. We have reasons to believe that there is something wrong. We wanted to talk to someone who might know more or better. They turn and look you both over. And I think... You don't recognize any spell or any cast of any kind, uh, but Eleni, you would re you would recognize almost the glazing eyes of similar when you detect magic. So almost like they've they're they're inspecting something further. Um, I'm I'm going to allow my swarm to just gently pop out, like we were saying, like out of the collar, just sort of float around a little bit. Um, and she will look and extend a finger, and one of the moths does fly over and lands on the tip of uh, her finger. As fascinating. She lets it go. And then she looks over um, to Volu and, ah, I, I, I have not encountered this before, but uh, I, I recognise one of our own. What uh, temple do you serve with, Volu? Well, a young one. Um, I don't, don't really have a temple. Um, so you are new. Have you uh, noticed uh, many changes? The, the ability to uh, produce light, the ability to make flowers grow, maybe something more complex even. How, uh, how, how long have you? Uh, you are not that old for one that is they they seem very confused and they will sort of sit down uh, is it um both of you are very interesting and uh, to answer your question uh 
yeah yes we we do believe that maybe something is wrong with Astera. I mean, something has been wrong for a very long time, ever ever since Larixa did uh, what she did. Um, I would say both of your insights pick up less of a... So sometimes you've seen priests talk about Larixa in like a very hateful way. There's less of a hate and it's more of like a understanding or or uh trying like that was a shame kind of thing rather than a yeah or less of it's a shame and more just like uh th there's no point in hating on her now you're like almost like what's the point in hating somebody for a mistake that sort of vibe yeah. um it's an element of forgiveness there i don't know hmm. and they uh but but yes we have the 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 callings have quietened the the land in areas is becoming more wild and untamed. Beasts that were not so aggressive are becoming more aggressive. Um, you, you say callings. How does it feel when you have a calling? Well, that is a, a very deep and, and long question that really is different for everyone. But let me think. The, f the first time I thought I heard Astera was while sitting on my porch watching the fire fireflies dance across our garden. Sometimes it is nothing and sometimes it is something, but that what you are experiencing now uh, and, and sorry, your your name. I, I am. I, I'm sure she uh, she mentioned, but I am a high priest Ar Arcana. Thank you. I I am a Lenny. Um, I'm conflicted because I don't but, re really don't I, really want to lie to this person. But I was gonna say, Liam. Every time Eleni introduces herself. She's been this, lying for so, a long time. But this is the difference. You like, and, yeah. and I won't ask Volu for deceptions every time, forever. No. But he has made this name up in the last day. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, and maybe remembered it a bit, but like he has made this decision in the last day. And also, to be, to be fair, I'm going a bit off Paul's reactions, right? Like Paul, yeah. a, a little bit of why I'm going to ask for a deception this time is to cover the Paul, hesitation. Paul, Paul. If yeah. if you want to cover the hesitation. Or if I'm, gonna... I'm, I'm, I'm debating just actually saying my name because yeah, well, this is it. And it is saying the, it is the feeling, the, the feeling. Have I felt uh, anything from Astera since I've walked in the building? No, but you have been very calm, like all the ang almost like you forgot you were in a city for a second. You feel like you're back wandering through the forest, and you've just come upon this building rather than. You're in the dead center of a major city. I think I'm going to say my actual name only because when I asked about the call in, it was very similar to the first time I heard of Sarah. And there's just an element of trust to have in this person. There's nothing that my mm. passive insight is saying otherwise, is there? No, um, no. No. So I would say, and I'm, I'm Bolu. Well, well, what you are experiencing may not, but sounds very similar to what many of uh, Astera's followers go through. Do you know the story of Astera, of our planet? I'm assuming that Eleni would have heard the, the usual... The general gist, yeah. But Volu wouldn't necessarily. Only... <clears throat> a little the stories i had when i was very young but so they almost seem faded in the memory so our planet the planets that we stand on it is actually a living creature that we call astera that is the name that we heard from it the first time that our uh helig anterin first spoke to him spoke to them um they are very old and 
they do not have the capability to see what is on our planet. But they can feel. And if you are able to listen, we can hear it. The calls that we speak of are those moments when we are so at peace with ourselves and where we are in that moment that we are actually able to hear what, what Astera is saying. If it is true in your case, I would advise you to, to head to the Sacred Isles. The waters there can, can confirm they, they glow with when the energies of Astera are present on a person. That is how the first Helig was chosen. Um, for you, Eleni, you know there is, you have heard of the giant waterfall in the, on the Sacred Isles. You've never physically seen it. Um, but you have heard that um, lots of priests of the Andonite religion venture there at least once in a lifetime. Um, to, it's like to, a pilgrimage kind of thing. Yeah, because it, it's, and it's almost seen as like a, the, the, there's, I don't know how much you would have come across it directly, but there's definitely that level of like, how much did the water glow? Was, you know, are you bathed in holy light or was it just, uh, you know, how, how devout are you? And from what you do know and will have experienced is Astera priests come in all forms. You have met Astera priests that teach you ways to smuggle stuff into cities and how to get, <laughs> over, get through the establishment and how, you know, like there, there is, Every kind of cleric you can imagine prays to Astera because it's just about being devout and at peace with yourself enough to hear the calls. Okay. Many, many, uh, though, that hear it do, don't become priests. They just continue just occasionally getting whispers and, and, and many, many, many just ignore, learn to ignore them altogether. So maybe okay. at some point you don't no need to rush. I myself have still not been to the Sacred Isles yet, but I luckily found my faith and ran it. Uh, I, I grew up in the uh, Imdor area, and it is very commonplace that priests in that area will travel to villages and seek out those that might be able to hear the call. That does not happen so much in the other lands. And you said that the callings have quietened. They, they're happening less often? Yes. Uh, only even within the, those who are well-established priests are claiming a, a struggle to hear the calls in the last year or so. We, I know that we are looking into what what has happened but the it is such a, a endless list of possibilities the the initial thoughts is maybe that the the place to look would be over in Giskia where the where the land was separated by by Lyrix's magical blast but we so far have found nothing I'm I'm talking to Volu now. Hmm. I'm not sure what we would do next here then. Maybe the Sacred Isles is a good place to go once we've finished here. Um is that somewhere that you'd like to see? It's not somewhere that had ever entered my radar of planning. Uh, she does also, uh, as you sort of say that, um, and, and you, Eleni, um, the creatures that reside within you, I assume? Yes. They are from the Sacred Isles. They, uh, I have never seen them anywhere else. Occasionally we are able to summon them with 
waters from the from the Great Falls, but uh, they are a type of spirit that long the stories are said that long ago the connections between the plains thinned during a night of Galaris and a bunch of fey creatures ended up on on our side of our, our side of the plain uh, and you all know this obviously you know like the forest to the south is filled with fey yeah. creatures and it's fairly well common it says that well those fey creatures that ended up on the sacred isles instead bonded to Astera in a search for a connection s close to what they had in the Fey. It has altered them over generations, and they are now of this plane, but hold many of the properties that they still once did. I mean, I was... I was an Andon when I, when I bonded with these creatures. I mean, if it was to be anywhere, it could be there. The largest temples and the the uh, obviously you know the the birth city of of the Andonite religion. Uh, for those of you, uh, uh, so for Chris listening and, and for any audience members, um, the Andon area birthed around the Andonite religion. So it's almost they discovered the sacred isles, started spreading their word, and almost in a need to have a base port to sail to the sacred isles from, the gatherers gathered and gathered and gathered, and it grew out of necessity. Um, they're not very uh, nation or land driven. Every time they've encountered another nation, they've basically been like, as long as you leave the sacred isles alone and, and maybe listen to our words, right? And it's like, um, and for you guys, you know that the Yixen do not care. Worship what you want, do what you want. Giskia don't mix with them. And then obviously Imdor into in Vercel heavily mm. worship them and the other areas mixed. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I I'm just going to sort of say I, I, I didn't know that. Um, I I didn't consciously invite them in. Interesting. She sort of says that out loud and then almost feels a bit... She's never really said that mm. before. And certainly almost feels awkward that Bolu's here to hear that as well. That's mm. a... I um, think so. She would pick up a little bit on the awkwardness, and so she would say, uh, "It does. Uh, the story of how is not really necessary. What is certain with it is that, for some reason, Astera directed these creatures to you. They are intrinsically linked. This is probably why you are also feeling uneasy." If Estera was to come to harm or 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 forbid die, then they lose their tether to this plane, essentially. Elenny's so Elenny's gonna... literally gonna say, I think I need some air. And she's gonna nod, at, like, with respect mm -hmm. at the high priest. Mm -hmm. But she's gonna go out the room, and she's gonna leave the temple and go and stand outside. She will then wait. She'll let Volu spend as much time as he likes. But she's she's had a sudden oh shit, and she she just needs to get out mm -hmm. of there. Uh, she will uh, watch. As as they leave, and then they will stand again and begin ruffling before they uh, pick up um, something off the side volume and bring over to you a wood carved uh, almost like bracelet with the symbol of a, of a stare in it uh, there is no pressure but here is uh, something for you to focus your prayers should you need 
And then she closes her eyes for a second and says, uh, may your steps be light on a stair of soil and maybe may your heart be open to her whispers. If you're, you or your friends need to talk again, you are welcome. But for now, I must prepare for my sermon. I'll take the bla- bl- bracelet, but as I take it, I'll kind of take it there, but then kind of clasp my hand over mm-hmm, the top of mm-hmm. her hand and just have hold that for a moment and stare into her eyes. And say, will we be okay? I do not know. And then I'll kind of just nod and take them. Scurry to back out of the hall. Yeah, and and you, kind of nod at the person who's preparing. Um, and then Yeah, the gr- the groomed on waves as you as you exit. Are you alright, Oleni? Oleni. Eleni sort of sat next to. I'm assuming there are gardens around. Yeah, this is what this is there. Well, it the, it's so almost like it was a street and has been made to have yeah. gardens, but there are garden areas. She's going to be literally sat if she can get squeeze herself in. She's going to be sat surrounded by flowers and mm. sort of like close to the ground. Um. Ah. Oh. Volu, I I'm really scared. If I I thought I thought this made me like some kind of superhero, some kind of super strong being that could do anything but the truth is if if something happens to these creatures i'm dead i i die i'm i i know it's a lot to take the the priest priest priestess she spoke so so clearly and with such conviction that it almost made it feel inevitable. But we do not know when that will happen. And all things begin and all things end, but there is there is the time in between, and that's the time that we have together. And we get to choose what we do with that time. And then at that point, I'm going to kind of just get a hand and give her the bracelet and say, think on this any time you worry and know that you are with more than just your creatures. She's going to sort of smile, like wry smile, and then... She'll just sort of whisper, but I have things to do. I can't leave yet. And then she's going to sort of shake it off and... Right, okay. Um, scriptorium. Library? Somewhere? And and as you dust yourself off and get up to head off into further into the night and Cadfessi, that is where we will leave this week's session. Thank you very much for playing. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you are enjoying our new campaign and the calls to Astera, please hit the like and subscribe button so you know when the videos are coming out and the notification bell so you know even more when the videos are coming out. <laughs> and as always, roll in. <laughs> Bye. This is the end of part one. Part two airs Sunday, 7 p.m. GMT or will be linked in the top right of your screen now. Thank you for watching, and roll well.